Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. The problem we are going to do today is actually asked in a lot of uh, top tier IT companies. And if we look at the recent data, it has been asked in Amazon 20 times, Apple 8 times, Facebook 2 times, uh, Google 6 times. So needless to say that this is a really important problem. Uh, so I hope you provide your utmost attention. Uh, this is the outline on how we are going to solve this uh, and, and the things I'm going to cover in this video. So first we'll understand the problem statement. I will be creating a brute force solution. Uh, then we will build an optimal solution with dynamic programming. And uh, at the end, I'm going to show the Java code for this one. Uh, basically, uh, this is a lead code medium problem, but in my opinion, it should be a lead code easy problem. Uh, because it's not very difficult to understand. But the thing is, its concept is really important. Uh, that helps you build the conceptual knowledge of dynamic programming, which you can use in a bunch of different uh, problems. And a lot of FANG companies loves to ask this kind of questions. So if we understand the problem statement, uh, basically we are a professional robber uh, and we are planning to rob houses in each street. Now the thing is, uh, the way houses are mentioned uh, in the street is that every single house has some amount uh, in that particular house. But the only condition we have is if we rob one house, we cannot rob the house that is exactly adjacent to it. So suppose we decide to rob this house. Uh, if we rob this house, which means that we cannot rob this house or this house. And uh, we can again, if we want, we can again rob this one. Uh, so that option we have. And the, our aim is to maximize our profit. So basically we are given an input array nums uh, that shows that for every single house, how much uh, amount of money is presented over there. And we need to see that what route can we take, which maximizes our input or the amount of money we can steal. And uh, we need to provide, show that in the output. So let's uh, try to understand the, this with an example. So basically over here, we are given the values as one, two, three, and one. So notice that the maximum uh, amount we can uh, steal is basically if we go down this path. So if we start with the first house and then notice, then we can't use the, we can't rob the second house, but then we rob the third house and uh, the sum of these two would actually become four and this would be our answer. So for the brute force, we are going to solve the same problem. Uh, basically, one way to uh, understand the brute force approach is that at every single position, initially we are at zeroth location. So if we just make all the possible pairs uh, which we can create, where we can rob houses, basically that would be our solution. So let me show you how. So initially at zeroth position, now we have two options. Either we can select the value number one or two. So Either we can select the first value or second value. Uh, and these are the subsequent values. Now at this position one, we again have two options. Either we can rob the third house from here, or we can skip the third house and we can also rob the fourth house if we want. So the two choices we have over here is either we go down this path or we go down this path. And uh, at this, house number two we only have one option we can't rob this one or we can't rob this three so we can only rob this one so uh, the only choice over here we have is actually one and now we just do the sum of all the values so uh, for this path the sum we would get is four uh, for this particular path the sum we would get is two. I just put it in a box so it's easier to differentiate. And down this path, the maximum sum we can achieve is three. So if we compare these three elements, we can clearly see that four is maximum. So we simply return four. Now brute force solution works. But well, the problem with this one is that we need to create every single pair. And uh, in order to generate pair, essentially at every single position, we have two options that whether we need to keep this value or we need to, we do not need to keep that value. And that eventually would bring a lot of different values 
in our graph and uh, on the number of decisions we can make which means that the co time complexity for brute force approach would be you guessed it correctly 2 to the power of n uh, where n is basically whatever the number of inputs given over here and you guessed it correctly uh, also i already gave it away uh, but we are going to use dynamic programming over here and let me show you how we can use dynamic programming to solve this problem uh, we are going to have use a custom example and i have already mentioned it a bunch of times that it is really important to have your own custom examples uh, that shows that you can think outside outside of the box so over here initially uh, we are at this position value number two okay so what we can determine is that initially at this position if we were given only one house what is the maximum amount of value we can steal from this particular house? Of course, the answer is pretty simple. We can only steal whatever we are given, right? Because we, we are only given just one house. So initially at this point, suppose if we create an additional data structure that keeps the track of what is the maximum amount of money we can steal up for any element then it becomes then our decision making will become easier and we would be able to choose that what path we want to take uh, so let me show you by an example so initially at this position value number two the maximum amount we can drop will only going to be two because there are no other values before that so this is the maximum amount we can drop so far okay now this at value number four the maximum amount we can drop is actually up until this point it's only four because we can't use two uh, when we are robbing four uh, when we if we choose to rob this second house if we choose to rob this one we can't use it uh, we can't basically use this first house so uh, we know that for the first two values these are the maximum amounts we can rob now we are at this position number three so at this position number three, we have two options. Cho choices are pretty simple. Either whatever the value maximum we have so far over here, which means that so far the maximum value we have is four or whatever the previous maximum value we had plus whatever value we currently are at. Because remember, if we decide to rob this house number three, uh, basically we can, we still have the option to rob house number two. We can't rob house number four. Uh, so up until this value number five, the maximum we can rob so far is actually uh, five. Why? Because we can we check that. Okay. Up until this point, what is the maximum that previous element has robbed? Basically like one house before this house has robbed and the, that maximum value is two. So it, I can do two plus three. So maximum I can rob under up until this point is actually five. So, okay, we have this knowledge and up until this value, the maximum we can rob is four. Now let's forget about this one for now, because anyways, at any given time, we are only concerned with the house that are adjacent to each other. Now we are at this position number nine. So what is the maximum value we can rob up until this point nine? Uh, well, the answer is quite simple we check that okay uh, what are the two values before this nine so this is five which means that if we decide not to rob rob na this house the maximum we have robbed so far in this uh, sub uh, sub array is actually five but how do we decide that whether we want to keep this nine or not well we just need to apply the same logic the house that is adjacent to nine before that what is the maximum amount we have found so the maximum for that is four and we do four plus nine so four plus nine is 13 which means that up until this point the maximum we can get the amount is 13 which is definitely greater than five so it is in our interest to keep this pair so far now we can forget about this four because we already calculated its value over here and now at this next value value number 11 again we have two choices do we want to keep 11 or not so again we do the same thing 
we compare 11 with whatever value we have over here uh, we do first of all we do sum of 11 plus uh, this 5 so we do 11 plus 5 okay this one is 16 so which is greater than 13 which means it is in our interest to keep the value 11 uh, so again we are going to have 16 over here we can forget about this one because we already calculated its value and uh, yeah so we are at now the two choices we have is 16 and 13 and this value number two we need to check two items uh, so value before that this is 16 and this one is 13 so we do 13 plus 2 15 so so far if we decide to keep this value number 2 in our uh, list of houses that we are planning to rob the maximum value we can achieve so far is 15 uh, but the thing is we have already found a better option than this 15 and which is 16 uh, where if we decide to rob these three houses we will get the optimal uh, answer and notice that every we were able to complete this whole iteration in just single uh, it we were able to complete this whole calculation in, in just a single loop uh, because we were keeping track of uh, whatever the elements we have calculated so far which is the exact use of di dynamic programming and we are not using more than one element at any given moment which means that our solution is actually quite helpful and uh, very perfect so let's calculate the time and space complexity and ba basically this would be the optimal solution so time complexity as you guessed it correctly it's actually big o of n because we are completing everything in just one single iteration we don't need to do multiple rounds of uh, checks and the space complexity uh, we have is actually big o of one it's actually constant time because notice that at any given moment the maximum value we were keeping track of is just couple of elements uh, and uh, we kept on updating our elements that whatever we are keeping track of which means that uh, we are not using that much space we are not creating an additional array to store all the values okay let's create two elements uh, we'll name it rob1 and uh, initialize it to 0 and we'll create a rob2 we'll also initialize it to 0 and we'll have another uh, variable we'll just name it max to keep track of uh, maximum element that we have calculated so far and now let's run a for loop inside the loop first of all we'll calculate that whether we have achieved the maximum value or not so max would be so whatever value we have at drop one plus whatever value we are currently at so this is one option or whatever the value of rob2 we have because notice that the drop2 element is actually right adjacent to this ith element and now we need to update the values of rob1 and rob2 so rob1 will actually become whatever value of rob2 we had because we are updating it every single iteration and rob2 will actually become the maximum value we have found so far and uh, yeah i think this this should be our uh, solution and at the end we will return uh, the max element so let's try to run this code okay now our solution seems to be working let's try to submit it oh, okay yeah our solution is actually zero runs in zero millisecond and it's 100 times faster than all the other solutions but the thing is this is not true uh, because we are given a limited number of test cases we are computing everything in just uh, constant time so that's why it's showing us the 100 percent faster so i'm not gonna claim that I, my code is greater than everyone else's uh, we have really smart people in lead code community who writes way better code than me so hope you like the video